We are going to continue reading I Am Malala, the Young Reader's Edition, on page 176. Chapter 33, This New Place. We have settled now into our Birmingham life. We live in a tidy brick house on one of those tidy tree-lined streets I saw from my window in the hospital. It is lovely, orderly, calm, and quiet, too quiet. There are no children playing cricket in the alleys, no men in the guest room arguing politics, no women in the back porch having a good gossip. My father, who was always the friend of all friends to the men in Sawat, has many visitors, but few are real friends here. My mother, who cannot speak English like the rest of us, wanders perplexed through the shops, inspecting the strange foods for sale. Kashal spends a lot of time alone in his room, wishing, I think, for his old life. And the other day I heard Atal, who has the sunniest nature of us all, crying because he had no one to play with. We are just a few feet away from the next house, but for all we know of our neighbors, it might as well be a mile. As my father says, we live in a neighborhood, but we rarely see the neighbors. Whenever we go out, people approach us and ask to take a picture with me. I don't mind. I understand that the people who come up to me are the same ones who gave me support when I needed it and who give me courage now to keep going. It's odd to be so well known, but to be lonely at the same time. Meanwhile, we have all adapted little by little, to this new place. My father wears a handsome tweed blazer and brogues now when he goes to work. My mother uses the dishwasher. Kashal is having a love affair with his Xbox, and Atal has discovered Nutella. I still go to the hospital for regular physiotherapy sessions to learn how to move my facial muscles, and I'm told I may have more surgery ahead, but I don't think about that too much. One night, our family was out for a walk in the main shopping district in Birmingham. I was marveling at all the different types of people in this city. Unlike in Mingora, where everyone looks the same, here there were all kinds of people. Freckle-faced boys in soccer jerseys, black women with long braids, men in business suits and women in business suits, conservative Muslim women in burqas, and young Muslim women in jeans and headscarves. All of a sudden, a young man called out to my father from behind us. We turned, and I saw that he had the dark features of a Pashtun, but he was wearing Western clothes. Sir, I, hold him, I heard him say to my father, I am from your tribe back home. I know who you are. My father extended his hand, happy to see a fellow countryman. The boy pointed at me. Sir, we all cried for your daughter. We prayed for her, he said but what you are doing is not safe. My father looked puzzled. You cannot be out this late in Birmingham, he said. This city at night, it can be dangerous. My father and I looked at each other. Then we explained to my mother what the boy had said. The poor boy was confused by our reaction. My father hugged him and thanked him, but we couldn't quite explain. How could this quiet, orderly place be unsafe compared with what we have come from? At my new school here, I wear a British schoolgirl's uniform, a green sweater, striped button-down shirt, and tights, and a blue skirt. Most of the other girls wear their skirts short, but my skirt is down to my ankles, and I wear a headscarf as well. Luckily, there are a handful of Muslim girls in my class who do the same, so I don't stick out quite so much. But some of the other girls roll their skirts up even shorter as soon as they arrive at school and let them down again before they go home. And I think, what an interesting country this is, where some girls are free to cover their bodies and others are free not to. Here, we also have projectors and laptops, videos and Wi-Fi and classes such as music, art, and computer science, and even cooking, which I hate. It was a bit of a shock coming from Pakistan, where school was just a teacher and a chalkboard. At times, I wish I were back home in that simple schoolroom with no computers, but then I think of how my old friends would love all this fancy technology and these special classes. Sometimes I feel sad that my old friends don't have all the wonderful things students have here, and sometimes I feel sad that they have what I don't, one another.
There is something of a gap between me and my new schoolmates. Sometimes they make a joke and I don't get it, and sometimes I make a joke and they don't get it. Their manner with one another is also quite free compared with the way girls are in Pakistan. I want to join in, I want to have fun, but I don't quite know how, and I cannot be too cheeky. I am expected to be good. I am a good girl, I always have been, but now I tell myself I must really be good, so I take extra care with what I say and do. No one else is telling me to limit myself like this. If anything, the teachers here are always encouraging me to be free, to feel at home. But I'm not really free to be like other girls my age because of the way the world sees me. When you have such a public role and so many people counting on you, I believe you must always act in the way people expect of you. My life has become extremely busy. I'm making books, documentaries, and speeches, and I am meeting interesting people doing social media campaigns, and engaging in humanitarian work. I get to do so many exciting things and go to so many exciting places, but so much travel while trying to keep up with my studies and exams isn't easy. I am only human, and sometimes I get tired. Some days I wish I could just sit on the couch and watch Mind Your Language or Skype with friends, but I take the work I'm doing very seriously, always. I haven't got a best friend here like Moniba or even a rival friend like Malka Inor. But girls at my new school are very kind to me and I am beginning to make friends. They invite me to go bowling or to the movies or to their birthdays. They are lovely girls, kind and fun. But it's not the same as it was back home. There I was just Malala. Here, at least at the beginning, I was Malala, the girl who was shot by the Taliban. I wanted to just be Malala again, a normal girl. At first, I wondered how I could ever be friends with these girls. I have seen and experienced things they couldn't even imagine. But as time went on, I realized they have had experiences I can't imagine. What I'm finding is that we have much more in common than we have different. And every day we learn something new from one another. And every day I feel a little bit more like plain old Malala, just another girl in the class. But when the day is done and everyone files out for their buses, I think for a moment of the scramble at the end of the day at the Kushal School. I think of how we all tumbled out of the building into the Dina that bumped and bounced along the crazy crowded streets of Mingora.